Tim, your yard flows absolutely beautifully. But tell me about this lovely gazebo. Well, one summer we had a particularly bad mosquito year. So the next winter, I spent the winter designing it and made sure that it was screened in. And in the spring, I built it. So then, who decorated it? Linda designed and decorated the inside. Of course, I did the work and she told me what to do. Inside is just like another room, so it was decorating a room, basically. Well, I want to find out a little bit more about some of your water features, too. Okay. How many water features do you have in this yard? We have two ponds with waterfalls and 13 fountains. This one used to be just a little bubbler and I decided to make it into a, a small waterfall instead. How do you care for these? The plants that we put in here, the water lettuce and the water hyacinth help keep the algae down. And we also add a little bit of a blue coloring called pond shade that also helps keep the, the algae down. So the ponds are pretty low maintenance. The fountains, I drain whenever they get very dirty. Uh, I do have a, another trick that I use where I put hydrogen peroxide in them to help keep the sides clean. And that's safe for the birds. So it's much better than detergent or bleach or something like that. What do you do with all of these in the wintertime? The, all of the statues that aren't cement and all of the fountains that are resin get stored in the gazebo. And then we wrap the entire gazebo with plastic and it keeps the snow out and they stay nice and safe in there. Is this a patio out here? Yes, well, that was actually one of the first things I did. Uh, the, the slope of the yard was just a hill that went down and we have about a 30 foot drop back here. So I dug out half of the hill and put it on the other side and built the railing and the retaining wall there to make it into a nice flat patio. And next to the sunken patio is the Japanese garden. And this is one of my favorite areas because I get to design it. And it's not a true Japanese garden as far as the elements go, but we have a lot of the traditional elements such as the pagodas, the Japanese fishermen. We also have a Chinese warrior mixed in there, so it's a blend. Uh, the cranes are a traditional Japanese element. And most Japanese gardens don't have a lot of color, so we've added a lot of the red begonias and some red impatience to add some pop of color to the, the whole garden. Tim, what is this statue or this fountain right here? That is a, a small little fountain that we call the fire fountain because it's got a LED light that lights up the little flame in the middle. So there's not actually a fire there or anything? No, it's just lights. I also love the topiary. How often do you have to clip that? Those get trimmed at least once a year. They're a, a juniper and we purchased them with the balls and so we try to keep the same ball shape that they came with, but they do like to grow. <laughs> so once a year is enough? Yes, I did it uh, about a month ago and they're starting to look a little shaggy again. So sometimes twice. Do you have to do anything to get that through the winter? Um, I put burlap over them because we do tend to get some winter burning from the winter sun. In the centerpiece of the Asian Japanese garden is the pond. When I built it, I wanted a flat spot for the birds to take baths. And I used a rigid liner for the, the pond part. And when I built it, I didn't realize it was actually in the shape of a guitar. 
and I play classical guitar, so it turned out to be very fitting for that. And you didn't even plan it that way? No, it was an accident. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful yard with us and with all of Prairie Yard and Garden viewers. Well, thank you very much for coming. We very much enjoyed having you and being able to share the yard with everybody.